So, anime characters that wear Lolita fashion. When you ask a Lolita how they got into Lolita fashion, there's a multitude of answers that will come up. Music is a popular one. They'll first learn about it from knowing Mana and Malice Miser, or just being into Visual K in general. Personally, I learned about Lolita fashion from Oshare K because my middle school crush was really into Oshare K and an antique cafe and everything, and middle school is hard, so you have to like everything your crush likes. But another common answer is anime. After all, Lolita fashion started in Japan. Anime is a Japanese animation medium at heart. It makes sense culturally that it would show up every now and then, especially in the 2000s onwards when Lolita fashion really started to come to the Japanese public consciousness. But the question is, how good is the representation? Are the outfits good? Are they even Lolita? It's your cowboy boy Monty. You're here to come be cute with me today and also to be judgmental. Let's look at the Lolita fashion outfits that anime has to give us. If any of you have been wondering why I'm gone, uh, I'm working on a game <laughs> with my spouse and it's a lot of work. So I've been doing that instead of filming. Also, the holidays happened, but I'm here now and it's gonna be your problem. So a couple disclaimers before we start the ranking. First of all, I'm going to be basing my judgments entirely on the outfit. I don't know all of these characters and I don't want to let my opinions of the characters I do know get in the way of how I feel about their outfits. So I'm going to focus on that. Second disclaimer. I'm sad to say, but we're not going to be covering any Rose and Maiden outfits. That whole entire character design is basically Lolita Bates, so we don't really need to talk about it. They're all great, they're all wonderful. I mostly want to focus on anime characters that wear Lolita fashion when the character design doesn't really call for it, or so basically they're the only one that really wears it for the most part. And of course, for our judgment, we have to go into our handy dandy tier list. Starting from the very top, the most beautiful, the most well-composed, the best representation of, no, not even the best representation, the epitome of Lolita fashion itself will be designated in the Blessed by Mana ranking. If you don't already know, Mana is the founder of the brand Moine et Moitié, one of the more famous adopters of Lolita fashion. And so not only were a lot of people exposed to Lolita fashion because of him, but his looks are just mwah, beautiful. And it's for that reason that a lot of people in the community refer to him as a god. So the most godliest of all outfits will be blessed by Manasama. The Sankit ranking, which is the good ranking, is 10 out of 14 right detachable sleeves. This one is very much a meme, talking about the body line lucky pack involving the several detachable sleeves. 10 out of 14 is a pretty solid score, so we're gonna go with that. The next ranking after that is Ita, affectionate. Ita is a derogatory term in the Lolita community that refers to an outfit that is bad. Uh, very subjective, but generally when people refer to something being Ita, it's because whether or not it's Lolita is very dubious, and also because the quality of the material is very poor. But in this context, when something is Ita affectionate, I'm dubbing it as something that is dubiously Lolita, maybe not Lolita entirely, might have some traits that are classically Ita, but I like it anyways. <laughs> so, in other words, something that's either bad or not entirely Lolita, but it's kind of charming. And the last and most shameful ranking, Ida derogatory. Something that is just plain bad, something that I personally cannot forgive and should not in any way be referenced to a Lolita outfit. Those are my rankings. Let's get right into it. Let's start with someone familiar, Stalking Anarchy from Panty and Stalking with Garter Belt. Lolita fashion has quite a lot of detail in it, and Panty and Stalking is a very stylized anime even more so than others. So it's a little bit difficult to judge just from the get-go, but upon further examination, I can safely say that Stalking's outfit is easily 10 out of 14 right detachable sleeves. It looks like she's wearing a black OP with a yoke, some lace hem, and some ribbon details that are sort of like this 
bluish purple indigo sort of color that she's working as a highlight color. She has that color in her headpiece, it's a bow on the back of her head, and it's really hard to see, but when you squint, uh, she's wearing black Mary Jane. All in all, that's a pretty solid Lolita outfit. Check out this outfit that she wears in another episode where she wears sweet Lolita. The details on the skirt are a lot more visible this way. Her headpiece is an iconic rectangle headpiece here with the ribbon details and the lace as you can see just like mine. Stocking is definitely a Lolita. Next up, Victory de Bleu from Gossic. Normally Lolita skirts are supposed to be somewhere around the knee whether it's a bit above or a bit below. It could vary a little if you're particularly short or tall but Victory's skirt here is unprecedentedly long. Lolita skirts, at least from what I've seen for the most part, don't get any longer than around the shin. Uh, this is going more into EGA or elegant gothic aristocrat territory. Just on the principle that the skirt goes all the way to the ankles and is almost touching the floor. And if she is wearing a petticoat, it's very much definitely muted. It's a lot more of a toned down more elegant and um, mature silhouette, which is what AGA is all about. I think it's a very good outfit. It's got like a, a wide sort of yoke and pin tuck detail over here. Those are nice princess sleeves. The skirt looks nice. The fabric looks very nice. It's a good job on drawing that. Again, with the rectangle headdress, except hers is in black. In this other outfit she has, she seems to be wearing a really lovely bonnet and a nice sort of over overcoat with an overskirt situation that adds layers to her. Even if it's not technically Lolita, EGA is sort of uh, Lolita's cousin. It's very Lolita adjacent. So on that principle of it being an EGA outfit, I think it's absolutely beautiful. I don't think you see this very often in anime, at least in my experience, where it's just a really solid, well done, well constructed, very elegant outfit, even on a girl that appears to be very young, or at least very youthful looking. That's a look. <laughs> that makes me wonder what I would look like in UGA. I think on the fact that it's just a beautiful, well layered, well done, well constructed um, EGA outfit, I'm gonna say this one's blessed by Mana. I think Manasama would like this. Next character we have is Celestia Ludenberg from Danganronpa. Now I got into Danganronpa around the same time that I got into Lolita around 2013. And at first I thought, Oh my god, there's no way that Celestia would ever be a Lolita. I mean like she's trying, you know, but a blazer, like what is up with her blazer? Who wears a blazer in Lolita? Her outfit seems to be an interesting combination of like a blazer uniform with um, sort of iconic gothic lolita um, sort of elements here. Black and white, especially for old school gothic, is pretty common. Rectangle headdress again. The black socks with the white trim. A pretty decent amount of lace. The blazer itself is decorative because of the rufflage at the end and also the corset lacing on the side. The blouse that she's wearing very evidently has Lolita detailing with the rufflage here and the buttons. Even though the necktie is a little bit unconventional, it still works out as a proper highlight and matches with this sort of old school and academic blazer sort of mashup here. There was of course a Baby the Starshine Bright collaboration where they did make uh, Celestia's outfit. Necktie not included though, that's not in the full set. We'll give you the whole Celestia full set. But the necktie, mmm, you're gonna have to buy that separately. 10 out of 14 right detachable sleeves. Next up is Cyan Hijirikawa from Show by Rock. Never seen it. So this might be a little controversial, but I kind of like it. Before we go into that though, okay, let's talk about why I'm classifying this as Ita Affectionate. So this character design has a lot of features that either are Ita or were once seen as Ita at a time. The skirt, okay, this, this, I genuinely can't really let it get away with it. The skirt is incredibly short. It is several inches above the knees. Um, I want to say almost at crotch level. That's not really for forgivable. There's rarely any situations in which Lolita should be that short. And of course, let's talk about the cat motif. Another thing that's considered debatably Ida is animal ears. 
just for the reason that it appears to be very costumey sometimes if you just throw it on willy-nilly without any purpose. But it's difficult here because apparently this character is actually a cat girl. Like those are her real ears. In the hypothetical situation that we were to bring her into the real world and cat girls were real, it would be really misguided to call her Ida just based on her cat ears and her tail. The cold hard fact of it is as subjective as Ida is, there's just no way to call somebody's body Ida. This is a fashion focusing on clothes. Nothing about their bodily features should have to come into play about how well they dress. So if we're going by that principle, I mean the ears, you know, those are her ears. She needs those to hear. And on top of that, she is wearing a rectangle headdress. There's a lot of rectangle headdresses in this, huh? Who would wear those? <laughs> The horizontal striped socks is also something that has been considered Ida, but it's really debatable and is really actually a good look in certain styles. I just said earlier that stocking from Panty and Stocking had a good coordinate and she has horizontal striped socks, so it works out. The whole concept of Ida is truly very unusual and fickle sometimes, and even changes with the times. I feel like this in an almost charming way encapsulates everything we've ever thought and do think of what is Ida. I think with a little bit of guidance, she can easily become a very cute Lolita. I mean, she just needs to change her dress, have a dress that's longer or like maybe even alter it so that it has a proper skirt and there she is. Next up is Nui Harime from Kill la Kill. <sighs> Am I gonna let my biases... Maybe a little. Maybe maybe I will let my biases um, guide me on this one. But let, let's, let's try to think about it objectively. There's elements to the Lolita aesthetic that are sort of here. You've got all the frills, you have sort of an A-line skirt that is about at the right length. You have the frilly parasol, the big poofy twin tails are iconic for a sweet Lolita look. And Nui is wearing what we in the Lolita like to affectionately call a head-eating bow. Whether or not it's a good or a bad thing is honestly up to the wearer. So while there are elements of the aesthetic there, I unfortunately have to say is that I don't think it really fits the bill. She just has her old shoulder and sort of bust area exposed, there's cleavage, all of which put together is kind of a big no-no in Lolita for the most part. Even in Edo Lolita, a sub-style of Lolita fashion that sort of focuses on some skin exposure and is meant to be sort of suggestive, exposure of the skin in that sub-style is usually done with a purpose. The rule of thumb that's often heard with Edo Lolita is that you have to reveal one place and then cover something else up. Not to mention that Ero Lolita really sort of elevates the theatricalness of the outfit by focusing really hard on either the Rococo or the Victorian influences that really drives this fashion. But none of that is really being done here. Nui has some Lolita elements, but the most important part, the dress, just shows too much skin. And Lolita really doesn't do that a lot. Sorry Nui, but your outfit's just plain Ida. Derogatory. And we're gonna end off this video with the last character, Mai Suzuki from Nana. Now upon first glance, when I was looking at this character's outfit, I thought to myself, okay, come on, that's not Lolita. The skirt's way too short. I mean, her garters are all out. But there is a lot more than meets the eye. Take a closer look at the accessories that this character is using. She's coordinating this outfit with a huge frilly bow. She's wearing a very frilly blouse underneath this blazer with this adorable heart detail. She's coordinated her bag that has the same tartan with her skirt. And she's wearing rocking horse shoes. All of these have the same exact sensibilities as a Lolita that's been in the fashion for a while. And while this outfit isn't Lolita in itself, this is just one of many ways that Lolitas use their clothing items in different fashions or just in different ways in general in order to fully appreciate them and use them outside of Lolita. Now if you look at this other outfit that she has, it's very much on the casual side, but especially if you're a lifestyle Lolita, you need casual outfits. You need to be able to enjoy simplicity. If it's on a day to day to day after day basis of wearing Lolita, you need basics like this. The blonde ringlets also a very iconic old school look. So while at these glances Maya might not look like the most biggest most extravagant Lolita ever, she coordinates her outfits with Lolita sensibilities. For that reason, because she carries this Lolita spirit in just the best way possible, in terms of appreciating your closet on a day to day basis, even at its most simplest, it's for this reason that she's blessed by Manasama. 
And that's all the anime characters that I can judge the outfits of today. I have a lot more and I am accepting suggestions for a part two or part who knows, whatever. I'm stopping now because my throat is hurting and I'm dying. Thank you so much for watching to the end and thank you so much for 100 subscribers. This video was a subscriber suggestion from a subscriber, patron, and friend, Vampire Prince. Thank you, Vamp, you're awesome. As always, I would like to give a big thank you to all my supporters on my Patreon, especially my top tier chosen one patrons, Mary Magdal, Amelia P, and Link you. I post pretty much everything that I make on Patreon first things first, you get early access there, as well as heavily discounted commissions. I'm not taking any other commissions right now, except for from my patrons because of that game thing that I'm working on. And you'll also be seeing sneak peeks of said game over there on my Patreon. So if you want to throw some financial support towards me, that's sincerely, sincerely appreciated. And if not, of course, thank you to all of my subscribers. We're at 130 right now at the time of me making this video. I am genuinely surprised that people are still subscribing even though I've been away for a couple of months. Uh, that's really amazing to me. I really appreciate that. Thank you. This has been Monty, your kawaii boy, and remember that every day is a great day to uplift yourself and others. Thank you so much for uplifting me. See you next time. Bye!